Help, I'm entering to the Twilight Zone. This is a madhouse. It feels like being cloned. And hello and welcome to Curse Mojo. And today, we're going to be talking about the infamous Pamper Chew. Hey everyone, this is Pamper Chew. Pamper Chew is one of the earliest lockouts on the internet. Well known for being an ABDL, as in an adult baby diaper lover. It's a subculture where adults love to pretend to be, you know, infants. It's like nostalgia taken to an extreme. He is also a furry. And let's just say, that combination isn't very uncommon. Hi everybody, this is my crib where I sleep, and I have all my plushies. And I, Daddy got me a bag of limes, because I love limes. But what made Pamper Chew so infamous from the rest was just how far gone he went. The infamy regarding Pamper Chew started from a post in an adult baby forum, with a subject matter pertaining to the idea if using used diapers is a good idea. By the way, if you didn't know, it's a bad idea. Don't do it. Glad I could help. Then Pamper Chew chimes in, talking about how he uses used diapers all the time, and has done so for years, as he uses microwaves to sanitize them, with everyone else in the thread being horrified and disgusted as Pamper Chew would find a way to discuss even those within the adult baby community. And this forum post totally cemented his legacy, as more and more of his oddities have been logged over throughout the years of the internet. But Pamper Chew isn't the largest law cow, he's more like a smaller side interest, as most of his content is him messing around with old electronics or reviewing diapers. But unfortunately, it doesn't stay that way. Go around in these dirty diapers, see? I mean, we got some too. <laughs> Those are all clean. Oh. <laughs> no, not all of them. I mean, they've definitely been worn. You know, they smell like dumpster. A little bit. Oh, no, no, it smells like tea. That's good. And today, we're going to take a look at the weirdest and the worst of his diaper antics. Now, unlike some of my other videos, I think this one will be a little more explicit. As many of the subject matters I do in these videos, I usually just talk about odd songs or odd art. But we are going to be looking at some very gross stuff. And some of it can get really dark. So I feel a change in music is in order. I'm gonna eat my children! So grab yourself a barf bag and let's get started on the list. Content warning, Pamper Chew. Suicide is painless. It brings on many changes. And I can take or leave it if I please. Number 10, Pee on Shoes. A very odd video where Pampa just randomly just pees on someone else's shoes. The rest of the video is just him messing around. And we don't see a lot, thankfully. But that's one way to disrespect your friend. On the other hand, this could be what he wanted anyways. So maybe it is respectful. And with that, I'm leaving it very low on the list. Number 9, Feet video. Oh god. So one thing that Pamper Chew would do is invite his friends over all the time. I mean, so what? He has a social life. Nothing wrong with that. But what gets very strange includes many of his stranger interests. Or, in this video, catering to everyone's feet fetish. Yeah, I, I did say this video was gonna get kind of explicit. So, this is weird. I, I don't like it. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I feel like I am ob obliged to put it on the list. I don't want to kink shame, but I don't want to see it. And I don't want to talk about it anymore. Number 8, Diaper Cannon. Now hear me out, imagine how much it would suck to get hit by a fucking diaper cannon. And well, so deadly, you would rather blow up instead. On the other hand, it's Pamper Chew, there's probably some weird fetishistic like reason going on, so whatever. So screw it. Number 7, Cooking Diaper. It's starting to arc. Here, I'll plug, I'll unplug the light. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, it's gonna get really hot here. So as I said before, Paper Chew's other main hobbies involve playing with electronics. Specifically really old school ones that in itself is kind of interesting. I remember the VCR existing. But he combines these two worlds when he uses his skills to cook a diaper. This is way better than a candle. It smells like vanilla, pampers, pea, and burning plastic at the same time. Ow! Dude, that's getting hot. That's getting fucking hot. Number six, playing with a dead rat. For literally no reason at all, there's a video of Pamper Chew playing with the corpse of a dead rat in the house. And this is creepy for many reasons. 
But if it goes very low on the list, then Filthy Frank does the same thing with his content. Does that make it right? No. But it does lower the supposed shock value. Like, I think it's fair that if you want to criticize Pampertube for this, you also have to do the same likewise. Though I don't recall Filthy Frank putting in his mouth. Did that really change anything? Look at the flick of the wrist! Look at the flick of the wrist! I also feel similar with the world of t-shirts. But even though this is very concerning, I do believe this was something he definitely regretted. Unlike Paper Chew. And like I said, there's still a lot more on the list. I appreciate my heart. Frank, Frank, you're sick! You're fucking sick in the head, Frank! Come back! I don't get it, you're still appreciating my heart! Number 5. Stomping on used diapers. So, here's a YouTube shorts for all of you. Now, we have heard about Pampertube's affinity for used diapers, but this time we actually get to see it, as Pampertube would often stomp on the diapers as a way to quality test them. And with these tests, he actually showed them being used, as many of them are very yellow in color. And what makes it all the more gross is that I'm not 100% sure this is his own piss or someone else's. How did we get here? So, I'm the first person in the world to squish a diaper on some of my sisters. Mm-hmm. Careful about the prongs. Number four, the original post. Now, I've already talked in great lengths about the original post that got popular. Not even thinking about the rest of the shit. Okay, Ralph, she's a different world. Not even thinking about the rest of the stuff, it still gets to you. But there is more to the story, technically. As one of the most infamous updates regarding Pamper Chew is admitting to having cancer. So I do have uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, I'm not worried about it, but everyone else around me is. Now, is this a simple coincidence? I don't know, maybe. But it feels to me a fitting continuation nonetheless. Which makes it perfect for number four. Because in many Asian countries, four equals S. Number three, diaper experiment. I'm doing an experiment, and this is... I mean, the, the park told me to take it down. Mad scientists exist in many forms. And this one takes in form of diapers. And for some godforsaken reason, Paper Chew would put in tons of diapers on his roof to see if they could be destroyed by the sun. I, I was really studying the way um, UV light from the sun breaks down diapers, which it does. Because when I was a kid, they said diapers took 500 years to decompose. Bullshit! I doubt anyone would think about diapers this much to even care in the first place. And what we're showing is tons of diapers probably used, being heavily destroyed. Okay, but why? What, what what good would this experiment do? That toddlers shouldn't be on the roof or else they'll be hurt by sunlight? Damn, that's some pretty useful information there. But if you leave them out in the sun, this is uh, one and a half years. Well, there's some rust on there too, but look at that. It, it just peeled off. The plastic is literally decomposing like that. It just falls apart. What most likely happened, that his house smelled like shit on the outside. So fuck you. Environmentalist, I'm gonna burn all the trash I want you. Number two, diaper tub. Oh god damn it! So we've seen this throughout the years. Pampachu collected enough of his own used diapers, or again, diapers that are probably used for numerous dumpsters, to fill an entire bathtub, and we see him uh, bathing in it, with it being filled with water, making him more dirty than he was before entering the tub, which means that all the piss and shit will be mixed in too. The idea is enough to gross out anyone, and this is probably the worst of the diaper antics, but sadly, it's not the highest in the list. Now before we get to number one, what I presented here is some pretty gross shit, right? What I presented here was some pretty gross stuff, right? Sure, it's probably terrible to imagine the smell, but really harmless. I mean, it's something he's doing it to himself, you know, that's his problem. But this is where we take a huge U-turn. Even those who are familiar with Pamper Shoes simply existing would probably be taken off guard. Number one, the telegram streams. I'm the fucking Pamper Shoe creep. I'm gonna creep, on, creep up on your house and poop on your porch. Due to the reputation he was receiving, Pamper Shoe decided to embrace it as he made posts on Kiwi Farms in their telegram page. Now, while Pamper Shoe shared a similar reputation with just an RPG, someone who is gross and disgusting but ultimately harmless, that all changed fairly recently. He shocked everyone, with many of the worst and disgusting things he said, one that includes saying the N-word. What the fuck? I got a diaper. I got, I got, I bought $4,000 for the diapers. My closet's full. 
Okay, okay, I'll stop delaying the inevitable. Because he confesses all sorts of things, such as being a pedophile attracted to children. Way worse than any of the diaper content. Rape sucks. But I like children. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not a bad pedophile, I just like children. I mean, I like to cuddle up with them or, you know, hang out with them. And... No, I would never fuck kids, but at best I might jack them off if they wanted. What I mean is, I don't want to stick it in. I can just play with their feet if they if they don't mind. But, uh, <laughs> they have that on Telegram, too. You can look at kids' feet all the time. And not just that, it also includes some animal abuse, too. Expressing joy in killing animals. Zoo sadism type of stuff. I hate monkeys, and I want to kill an animal. Well, I don't know if you guys are the Gorg people, but, uh, <laughs> uh someone's gonna come over here, hopefully, and we can take apart an animal together. And also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat it. I'm not, I'm not just gonna take it apart and fuck it. So we're gonna eat, we're gonna have dinner together. I like hitting squirrels with my car. There's a lot of them on the island. But when, when you get a thump underneath your tire, it's always satisfying. But it, I like, I like the thump. Squish, 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 squish. I love, I crush and squish. Now, there was some speculation this was real. Like, maybe it was some sort of AI thing. But it seemed to check out. There were some messages before that word has talked about. That shows this behavior. There's even a chat log where he talks about receiving illegal material too. Although he claims to believe that was a troll, I don't think sounding like a pedophile is flexing on the haters. I guess it goes to show that no matter how gross playing with diapers can be, nothing can be more disgusting than pedophilia. Well, this entire video ended in a huge fucking donor. But wait, I guess maybe there's something to change that. You see, in the M.A.S.H. movie, the director, Robert Altman, wanted a good funny song for the pretend funeral scene. So he sought his dopey 15-year-old son at the time, Mike Altman, to write the song in five minutes. Thus creating the song, Suicide is Painless, which was intended to be the stupidest song ever written. Having very silly and pretty depressing lyrics, the song was beloved by the production crew to have it be the main theme for the movie. Eventually, Match would get a television series starring Alan Alda, with the instrumental of the theme being used every episode, and due to the show's popularity, gave more popularity to the song, as it was covered numerous times. Now, the director, Robert Altman, was paid $70,000 for the movie, but his son, Mike Altman, made over millions of dollars due to the royalties, being credited as a lyricist. Dude made bait. So I hope hearing about the happy end to the writer of Suicide is Painless was able to wash away the dreaded feelings of this diaper-loving pedophile. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want, you can see some of my other content. Hope to see you soon.